Good morning, Flagler County. I'm Rich Carroll. You're listening to Flagler's Morning News on Wednesday, August 18th. And this local news is a service of Flagler County's Toyota dealer, Beaver Toyota, here to wow you. The Flagler County School Board meeting fell into chaos last night as members of the audience clashed over the mask in school debate. It got so out of control that the audience was ordered to clear the room. Many refused until Flagler County Sheriff's deputies showed up and took control of the situation. After about a 30-minute recess, those who were left in the crowd were allowed to return to the meeting, where the board would then reject every proposal made for a mask mandate in Flagler County schools. Each one of the proposals was made by school board member Dr. Colleen Conklin. Here's Conklin explaining one of her proposals and debating the issue with school board member Janet McDonald, who's against a mask mandate in school. It's just very simple. Make the motion to adopt a universal mask policy for our school district that complies with the governor's executive order and provides parents with an opt-out option. So you're making it more difficult for parents to do what they're doing now with our current policy of choice. While you are still providing an opt-out option for parents. So that means... So there's one extra step, is that what you mean? Yes, there is one extra step for the people who already have a choice not to have themselves or their children masked. If you want to vote it down, vote it down. But as a board member, I am certainly going to try to put in place something that I think might increase the use of our masks and provide us with additional layered support. And so make it more difficult for parents. So that means Janet, that parents our responsibility have to... is for the safe and well-being of our students. That mask mandate, which failed with a three to two vote, would have lasted for 90 days and applied only to students. Conklin also proposed a mask mandate on school buses, but that would be rejected by the school board as well. A wake-up call for parents in Flagler County after a 13-year-old is accused of making threats on social media. Karen Johnson reports. Recently, the Flagler County Sheriff's Office responded to a call regarding threats made online through social media. The 13-year-old suspect had repeatedly threatened a girl, telling her she's going to put a bullet between your eyes and threatening to fight the girl after making multiple threats to her through social media and through text messaging from a fake phone number. The victim also stated the suspect was sending pictures of guns, making the victim's parents concerned for her safety. Flagler County Sheriff Rick Staley says this incident is a wake-up call for parents, too. Parents, talk to your kids. We do not want to make these arrests, but Florida law gives us no gray area. Making written threats to kill someone is a second-degree felony. Please be the sheriff in your home. Watch what your kids are doing online, who they're communicating with, and what they are saying. The girl was arrested and transported to the Sheriff Perry Hall Inmate Detention Facility. She's been released to the Department of Juvenile Justice. For Flagler's Morning News, I'm Karen Johnson. The Flagler Executive Airport has reopened a runway after a complete redesign. Amy Cherry has more. Airport Director Roy Seeger tells WNZF work began on runway 624 nine months ago in October of 2020. A $9.2 million rehab, so that's coming to an end and put in almost a $2 million electrical vault upgrade as well. So really bringing the airport to being a state-of-the-art airport. We're also upgrading all the air traffic control equipment in the air traffic control tower. The work was paid for through Federal Aviation Administration and Florida Department of Transportation grants. Additionally, the airport's new T-hangers are almost out of the design phase. It's going to be able to store up to 42 more aircraft, which everybody knows that keeps touting how the Flight Executive Airport is an enterprise fund. So that's going to be a big revenue maker for the airport, as well as taking care of unmet demand for hangers. Right now, the airport has 56 T-hangers, and they're all full. The average wait time for a hangar is two years. From the WNZF Newsroom, I'm Amy Cherry. A dramatic rescue involves an elderly man caught between a fence and the edge of a canal. John Arking has the story. The Flagler County Sheriff's Office responded to an endangered missing person call in the area of Coconut Court in Palm Coast about 2 a.m. Saturday. Responding deputies learned that an elderly endangered male had wandered from his residence and had not been seen for hours. Deputies quickly began searching the neighborhood, including the saltwater canal behind the couple's residence. They eventually called in help from the Volusia County Sheriff's Office for their Air 1. 
stolen helicopter. But a short time later, a neighbor reported the man was in their backyard near the canal. Deputies immediately responded to the location. They found the man, who was clearly exhausted and in distress, holding onto the outside of the chain-link fence bordering the canal, dangling over the water. Deputies rescued him from the water's edge and provided him a place to sit while waiting on fire rescue to arrive to check on the man's overall physical well-being. Can we help you up, sir? You okay? Can you think you could stand? Yeah, give me some, buddy. Give me your head. We're going to sit you down the grass, sir, all right? And probably see some of it. There are five, six hours? Yeah. The man was extremely weak and could barely walk. Sheriff's officials say if he'd not been found quickly, it's likely he would not have been able to hold on to the fence much longer and would have fallen into the saltwater canal. After being cleared by EMS, the man was returned to his spouse at their residence. The Flagler County Sheriff's Office says they'll be following up with the man's family to go over services that are available to help prevent an incident like this from happening again. From the WNZF Newsroom, I'm John Hurricane. Flagler County Commission Chair Donald O'Brien is serving on the Finance, Tax, and Administration Committee with the Florida Association of Counties, which serves as the lobbying and advocacy arm for local governments. Any bill that's in that category or proposed legislation would be something that we would look at. And the members over time take take positions. When I say the members, the, the member counties and then the, the organization as a whole takes a position on a particular piece of legislation or bill and and then works on it either to get it killed or get it approved and passed by the legislature. There's so much important legislation that comes through that committee that impacts Flagler County that I thought it would be important that we had a voice on it. O'Brien also serves in leadership with the organization as a member of its board of directors. Flagler County Commission Vice Chair Joe Mullins also serves on a host of committees, including the Agriculture and Rural Affairs Policy Committee, while Commissioner Andy Dan serves on the Water and Environmental Sustainability Policy Policy Committee. What is it like to be a 911 dispatcher? First, you have to test for it. It's called a critical test, and oh. it's a modified version of dispatching. So we test their mapping skills, their writing skills. Then Christina Mortimer, the Director of Communications for the Flagler County Sheriff's Office, says you have to train for it. The training is intense. It is all on the job. So somebody can come in right out of high school and decide they want to be a dispatcher and we will provide all the training. Mortimer said for the tens of thousands of calls, you have to be trained. Sometimes, though, you get a good one. This little boy calls and he wanted to know how to make the color red because he was trying to draw a volcano and he didn't have the right color. So one of our dispatchers was on the phone with him and it was so cute because she helped him go through all of his crayons and make this volcano. And it was really cute. And it just it lightened the mood a little bit. The Flagler County Voice is on WNZF every Saturday morning at 8.30. You can also listen to the podcast on the Flagler radio app. Tomorrow, what about 911? From the WNZF Newsroom, I'm Deb Albertson. And now you're up to date on Flagler's Morning News. I'm Rich Carroll.